I just got a new office. Uh-huh. Uh, it, it took me almost two years. It took me, well, we moved so that our daughter could go to art school in Venice. Mm-hmm. Because if you're going to go to art school, you should be somewhere like Venice or Paris or mm-hmm. Rome, right? So um, Venice is a place that we all three really love. And we have some good friends there. And so we were just like, okay, let's do it. It's time. We knew that our limiting factor was going to be her schooling on the island where we were living before. Why? Uh, because it's um, school academics and school are not particularly valued. Okay. Uh, and so for somebody who has a bigger vision of what the world is rather than just this tiny little island, um, it, it was it's small. You know, I mean, it's like a lot of small communities, but it's also on an island, so it's not like you can just get on a bus and go right. get some big city energy. You have to mm-hmm. get on a boat for eight hours or get on a plane. And the high school options were uh, either touristic, so like language, but not really, and uh, management, but not really, and how to make people feel at home, but not really. And I say that because I've met a lot of the kids who graduate from that program, Mm. and you would not want them to work either at your chiropractic office and make people feel welcome, or you definitely wouldn't want them to work at your restaurant. They just... They, it, none of that was really taught, unfortunately. Uh, or, um, you know, like human sciences or um, yeah, they've humanistic st- sciences. They've studied human sciences and psychology, but they don't know to give you a hug if you're crying. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Correct. Uh, and now they certainly don't. So, um, yeah. so, and she wanted to do art school, and that wasn't an option on the island. So, so we were like, okay, now's the time. And we moved to Venice. I had found an office in a building that I had been going to for, since I was 18. Mm-hmm. So like this one building is a place where it was my point of reference in Venice and this tiny little space opened up in it, uh, totally renovated, perfect condition. And I just thought, well, that, that will work for now. Right. And my agreement was you I, all I need you to do is to make it a legal space and then a uh, legal not illegal <laughs> a, a legal. legal space so that I can put a sign up register my business with the comune and um, and that was our agreement and eight months later I said so how's this whole thing going and she said well if it's, if if it being legal is that important to you you should probably find a different space I was like, can I have my money back, please? No. No. Okay, you're a snake. Because you're in Venice. Right. And and that is what so many people said, is the Venetians are very much a, um, not mercenary, but merchant. Right. It's like they are business people. Tight fuckers, we call them in Ireland. Very possible. Yes. So that was number one, and then number two was a similar story, except that I gave absolutely no money. Okay. So I didn't lose any money, I just lost time. And to be fair, I did ha- do have a pop-up office in friends' apartment, so I was able to see people. But it just, I kept saying, it shouldn't be this hard. Yeah. It shouldn't be this hard. And mm-hmm. there's, there's some reason why it's not happening, and I don't know what that is super annoyed by it but okay um i i do try to live my life in a way such that things happen very gracefully and when it's time for things to change it's very obvious and that's how i know it's changing it's like oh okay no we yeah. this is what's happening and um and that was that all of those seemed had that at the beginning so i was like okay now this is the one uh, the third one was a lot like that too, mm. um, but the fourth one was the charm, and I now have an office in Venice. Right, I'm very excited. And you kept working throughout this, like you're seeing kept, some people. Yeah, I mean, I saw people, but it wasn't like a viable practice. Right. It wasn't what I wanted. Okay. Like I really wanted to have a practice that I could put on Google, put hand out name card or hand out my business cards, like. 
invite people to my office and yeah. be like, this and is my office. Yeah. This reflects who I am. This is my space. I don't have to put my table away when I'm done. My table stays up because right. it's my space. Yeah. And if I say, I can see you at 3 a.m. tomorrow, I can go because it's my office. Yeah. That's what I want. And then you're going to be more committed to it. For sure. Even just mm, in your demeanor. Everything. The way you are with people. Absolutely. If you're more committed to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And during that... I paid my rent in two days. Really? Yeah. For two days from working, I had yeah. already paid the, yeah. the rent? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was too. And it was just super annoying me that I couldn't... Like... Because I, I, I could feel it was there. Right. And I was just like, how is it possible that I know I can do this... And no one is cooperating. Like, nobody is on board with me right now. And, uh, and so, like, two weeks ago, I came home from my, what now I call my satellite office in Pantelleria. And did you keep that? I did. You, but you'll keep working there? I think I will. Because okay. I, well, this is going to make me cry. Um, right now, they really, 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 really need me. Okay. Um, there was uh, just a uh, um, a water spout. Okay. Just landed on the island and killed two people and seriously injured nine. And it's in the middle, or I hope it's the end, but I'm afraid it's the middle of a bunch of COVID death. Okay. And it's such a tight community that people are just they're devastated. Yeah, now. they're devastated and. Interestingly, I had sent out a message saying uh, to like 90 people saying, I'm coming. These are my dates. It was October. I did it. To 90 people? Yeah. Wow. Um, and I had my, my schedules. I mean, it's not full, but it's like, it's, yeah. it's chubby. Robust. Yeah. It's like, okay, I'm going. It's I know chubby. Is, <laughs> it's a thick schedule. <laughs> that schedule looking thick, boy. <laughs> Schedule After the juicy. beginning of this conversation, I'm concerned where this is going to go. <laughs> it was, it is uh, reasonably full. Okay. And so I sent a note to the same 90 people just saying my heart is with you and, um, and I, know what's, I know what's happened and I'm, I'm terribly sad. And I'm with you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's one of those things where I'm looking going, the, the last message I sent to these people was, I'm going to be on the island. Let me know if you want to schedule an appointment. That some of those people could be like. Um, and instead, so many of them wrote back and just said, thank you so much. And like maybe 10 of them wrote back and said, I want to schedule an appointment. I need an appointment. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually think we're, the word need was in there a yeah. couple times. Like yeah. people just... Or like, I need a place to process. And in Toulouse, uh, this weekend, we were just there for an anterior geometry, which is the second of our seminar series for the BGI seminars, not the other not ones. Not the BGI seminars. B B you hear that? BGI. Not <laughs> Biogeometric <laughs> integration. And uh, the anterior geometry is related to water is the, the element that it is connected to. It is related to the front of the body, and it often brings up work in emotions and organs. Totally up your alley. And, um, and I knew it was going to be an intense seminar because well, so much has gone because on. Because of the time, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I, what I know from the few conversations I've had with students, we've had to postpone three times. Yeah. So people were already like, I don't know if she's ever going to come, yeah. you know? And I think people were kind of sh shocked when it actually happened. Yeah. Um, and I, when my flight was canceled like a month ago, I looked at my husband and I said, I, I have, I have to, to go. They, I, they need this and I, I, and I need this probably. I, I have to go. And he was like, figure out how to get there. So I called Anna Sayaris and I said, if I come to Barcelona, super easy to get from Venice to Barcelona. Um, will you drive me to Toulouse and will you help me with the seminar? And she wow. said, yeah, totally. So that was, it was great because we had a nice girls trip car drive. And, um, 
And when we got there, the Friday night, it was open to all students, so it wasn't necessarily people I had seen before, so there was a lot of... New, new people. New people, so I, I kind of went backwards talking about the, um, the concepts of BGI, and, uh, and we were in this super, super weird space. It was <laughs> weirdest space I've ever been into. And we all walked in and went, huh. Well, wow. Was it like a dungeon? Uh, it felt like the old dungeons of the the BCC like back in the day. Uh, no, no, it worse. Went, yeah, it was <laughs> it was dirty. Yeah, uh, and there were it was infested with mosquitoes oh. and cats. There was cats there. Uh huh. Four okay. cats. That is that's. It was just weird, and so I was like, okay. Uh, and that's then, so weird that you have to address it. You have to embrace the weird at the start. And be like, hey guys. Okay, so this is what I. So I'm sitting here going. How, how, what is it about me that made these people think that this was okay? Like, I, I need to stop being so mellow. The crazy cat dungeon lady. Right? <laughs> what about me says that this would be okay? Yeah. So then I was like, I have to get over that because now it's, it's showtime, people. Yeah. So, so it was okay, and, but I said to Anna and to the two women who had inherited the organization of the seminar because it was originally two other people and they graduated so they right. passed on the the baton to these two the, women it so, seems like they just threw it to them oh, i don't think they passed them and, and, they, and they both walked this in your and they problem were like, this is where we're doing the seminar and i was like well if if there is any way we can do it somewhere else that would be great yeah. because first of all, it's too small. Second of all, it's disgusting. Mm. And, um, and what was really interesting, just energetically, because we were talking about energy earlier, uh, in the beginning, it was gross. I mean, it, in the beginning, it was gross. And then all the people came and the people were so happy to be there. And like a bunch of people came up that I had never seen before, knew nothing about. And they said, basically, something to the effect of it really didn't matter what you said i'm just so glad glad you're here it's so nice for us to be together yeah and at one point so um the the three it was actually four people were working on finding another place and at one point anna said there there's no other option this is where we're going to be this weekend and i said okay that's fine and she's like but i'm going to go buy cleaning supplies <laughs> and I said, okay. So she we'll said, I'm, I'm leaving for, you know, however long that takes. Fine. At one point after that, there was like a shift in the room. And it was like, okay, it's going to be fine. Even though, I mean, it's, it's still weird, but it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I finished the presentation, uh, one of the young women came over and said, we found another option. And I was like, the the second you found that option was the second that I knew that this pace was okay because it was just for tonight, you know. The other thing that happened is did, I know. Did, did you keep the space after? No. You went to the other place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to the no. other space. What do you think happened there? I just think it was like like something registered that this wasn't our home, and so it was okay just to be there for a couple hours. Like it was fine. Okay. As long as, like, I didn't want to adjust in there. I didn't want that to be the place. And the other thing that I knew is that it was so weird that it wasn't a safe space for people. And that felt so important to me with what I knew was going to be coming up. Mm. So to get to that, um, on Saturday morning, the adjustments were So we were ended up in this beautiful space. Just light, plants, Lights up on the wall, like it was great. Where you shoot top of BGI town. Right? Yes, yeah. it was perfect. And so I said, if we ever do this again, this is where I want to be. Um, and the Saturday morning adjusting was super easy, beautiful. Just we were faster than usual. It was just, it was nice, clean. And I was like, oh wow, maybe, maybe I am putting on what I'm experiencing and what I'm feeling and what I'm imagining these students are going through, maybe it's not true. <laughs> then we had Saturday, Sunday morning adjusting 
and it's like everyone let it all out and it took longer it was way intense and it was awesome and um and that safe space became this container for everybody's shit that we are all feeling as a profession there was so much frustration coming out on people. Um, there's so much compression coming in from this outside pressure to get vaccinated, to follow the rules. Um, in France, all health professionals are expected to be vaccinated by September 15th. Okay. So a lot of, a lot of students said, uh, I've just been vaccinated. And a lot of students were like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. And for me, I, I, get, I get it all. I mean, I have this, I, I get it. Like, I get being so frustrated that you've been to school for five years and you are worried that you're not going to be able to do what you have dedicated your time, energy, passion, yeah, money, your life, yeah. your life to, the threat of you can't do this. So, like, I get that, and I get that people are terrified that they're going to be isolated again. I, I mean, the media has done such a brilliant job of making anybody who has chosen to not be vaccinated be an asshole. Oh, yeah. Like, you are just an asshole. There's no other way to be, to be in the world. Yeah, like, they, they, they are evil, but you have to hand it to them. They're very good at what they they're, do. The they, pharma companies, the media, well. evil, evil people, but genius. They've really manufactured it well. They've, it's been brilliant. It's mm. been very well played. So all of that came up um, in, in the seminar, and it was really important to have that safe space where people could just... Bleh. Right. Um, and, you know, the, I heard somebody um, a few months ago who basically said, if you're not standing up and sh basically shouting on the rooftops, then you're not, then I don't want to know you as a chiropractor, basically. Right. And there was a moment where I was like... I've had those moments. Yeah, I'm sure you uh, have. I have. And, and I get it. Yeah. And the other thing that really... But when, when I sat down and, th and thought about that, because I'm, I tend to be very uh, spongy and absorbing of people's criticism... So I try it on, and then, and then I decide whether or not they're right for me or whether I have something to say back. And um, what came up for me in that is that chiropractic is a spectrum of human beings right. that express in the world through chiropractic. Right. And just like we were saying earlier, there are so many different use. What did you say? The chiropractic is such a wide range, or something like that. Like, like there, that. We, there's so many spectrum. different ways to yeah. yeah express in in the spectrum of chiropractic, and and just as as a community, we require warriors to stand up and and speak. We also require the caretakers, the holders of the sure, light. Yeah. And, I was and the same thing. And now. there's no, there's no better. Right. We are a community, and so if, so for me, I have not chosen to be vaccinated. I don't want to be vaccinated. I don't want to have to make that decision. I am going to push the envelope as long as I can. And that that is what feels right to me, and mm. it feels right like in my very soul. Yeah. I don't know how much longer that's going to be feasible and still be able to go to Toulouse and to be with these people who need, need me. care yeah. or yeah. need the space. Or yeah. maybe there's somebody else that can do it who's in Toulouse. I don't know. I don't know how it looks right now. But what I do know is that for us as a profession to start judging each other within our profession, we are so good at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are just <laughs> brilliant. There's like eight of us in the whole world and we just pick each other apart. Yeah. And and I don't want to do that. So I want I, I just want us to love each other and yeah. to be honoring and respectful of the fact that some people don't have the emotional, financial, 
philosophical bandwidth to find a way out of this tunnel right now. Right. And that that doesn't make them bad people. It doesn't make them bad chiropractors. It doesn't, it, it just, it doesn't mean anything. It means at that moment, that was the only choice that they felt like they had. Mm. And we have all made choices in our life that we go back and go, I, th- I had no other option. When at a different moment, if that choice were given to me, I might have been able to figure out how to do it differently. But we've all made decisions in our life where we're like, <sighs> and, and, and hope that the people who we hold dear to us do not hold that against us for our life. So, and, there's, and there's a lot of that at, at the moment, whether it's you, you want to get vaccinated or you don't want to get vaccinated, or you voted for Trump or you voted for Biden. Yeah. And, and there's families. Or you didn't vote. F- f- or you did what? Or you, or didn't, you didn't vote. vote. And there's families yeah. like yeah. tearing each uh-huh. other apart. Uh-huh. I try and think of the, the chiropractic thing and it, t- it took me a while to get here, huh? Like since the start of the corona. But if you look at the the dynamics that would have existed within a tribe, yeah, because we are yeah, still absolutely. cavemen, yeah. it, doesn't, it's, it, <laughs> it doesn't help to have a tribe of 50 Amy Burks yeah. because right. you're more the healer, the healing type. You're very empathetic. You like to listen. You like to weigh up all the options. It also doesn't help you to have a whole tribe of Mark Hudson's. Yeah. They're like, go and do it, yeah. like be a killer. Yeah. You need a mix of those people because right. we need the healing people. Right. We need the people that are going to go and die. We need the crazy people we that are going to go and... the hunters and the gatherers. And, and go and gather the things. Yeah. They don't want to fight anybody, but they know where to gather. Okay, That's don't right. eat that leaf. Don't yeah. eat, you know. That's right. Or you need the crazy people that are just going to smash the other tribe over the head yeah. with a rock and then cannibalize their brains. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff that like that. Hard. And it doesn't help to, yeah, that was probably me back in the day. It doesn't help to have one subset of that category of that tribe doing all of the work. And so you have this dynamic where there's a lot of people with a lot of different backgrounds and a lot of different mm, ways of perceiving the world. And I've gone through that because whenever this first came out, I was very vocal about it and I was very uh, angry and I was like, yeah, you know, there's all these chiropractors like wearing the, the masks and like uh, it really wound me up when I saw like people putting like the branding, like putting the logo on the mask. And I was just like, what are we doing? Like if BJ could see us now, he'd spit on us. And then you kind of can't, I've come out the other side of it and I'm like, okay, you do the best you can with what you have. And that's what they're making of it. And this is the way it is. I also think that a lot of the time, because the course of chiropractic has become so academic, because we really wanted to be doctors, yeah, right. we just really, the doctor title is what screwed yeah, us up the most. It's absolutely. Because it's like, oh, you want to be a doctor? Yep. Okay, now you need to know yep. embryology. Yeah. Now you need to know microbiology. Yep. Now you need to know ionic and covalent bonds. That's you right. want to be a doctor That's now? Right. So we've made this course that has become so uh academically stressful and i've just finished that i've just passed through that side i'm still suffering from the ptsd from it i'll probably i'll probably have ptsd for many years you will but um because you've made it so academic you attract people that are naturally they have to be more academically minded and academically minded people the nerds they are nice but historically those are not the people that are they're not the warriors the i'm gonna go to war for this i'm gonna let whereas back in the day the palm the six months the nine months or nine months from bebow and all and the ones going to palmer they were butchers and joiners and people that had had a profession before but now we've made it so academic fishmongers and now it's it's been so um, medicalized that you will attract the academic people and they tend to be a bit more Mm, meek yeah. mm, I don't mean meek like in, like in a weak way like they're weak people but they just tend to be a little less aggressive yeah. when it comes to these uh, topics and I think that's part of the reason why we're in this situation where I think a lot of people are just kind of taking it lying down they're just like oh okay so uh, in order to keep practice and I have to do this well I'll do this and then hopefully you make my life a little bit easier yeah. And then I'm like, okay, so this time next year, they're going to come to your door and they're going to say, you can't say subluxation anymore. And 80% of them are going to be like, okay, make my life a little bit easier. And it just, the line keeps moving and moving. But how how have you been able to 
deal with those frustrations? Because you you are quite understanding of other. Um. Uh, well, I'm also. So I'm a chiropractor. Mm. So I'm a weirdo. I'm also a pleaser. So, and I know that about myself. So that it, you know, it's it's got good things and bad. Um. I'm a rule follower to a certain extent. So it's been a very interesting process for me. Um, I th- it's like I'll wear the mask, but it's so dumb. But in Italy, it's been somewhat moderate because um, like you it's public transport and inside places. Yeah, same, same as here. Not on the street. Not on the street. Okay. Um, although certain areas now, uh, they've been upgraded. Right. They're special again. They got the premium package. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I guess you're, you're supposed to wear your thing on the street. Sign up for your free trial of communism. Yeah. <laughs> to upgrade to fascism. <laughs> for, for only nine ninety nine a month. I can't where we are right now. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, uh, it's been extremely exasperating. Uh, and I, it's like, since, since I have been on the island, I feel like we were talking about this when we were talking about Malta, um, I didn't know anyone. So it was really important to me that people never felt like I was trying to sell something Mm. and never felt like I was trying to get something from them. Nice. I was there to serve. Yeah. This is what I have. If you like it. Yeah. 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 And it, and they do. Yeah. That's my mm, philosophy to sales. Yeah. Um, I don't sell packages because I don't want to, I don't want to have unpaid or I don't want to have balances that I owe people. I would rather if you pay me every time, Keep it clean. Okay. Um, and also because <laughs> um, historically, I can get up and go and not worry. Like uh, I need to pay out. I need. To, yeah, I owe this person. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't want to do that. So, but also just because it's a culture where money is is tight. People are farmers. People are small business owners. Mm. There's not a lot of excess. It's not like when I was in Manhattan where my first visit was $275. Oh, wow. And that included yeah. your f- two follow-up visits. Right. But that was the first... Here, people are bringing you eggs and yeah, a bottle exactly. of wine from their exactly. vineyard. And, yeah. and, and at one point, my husband said, so are you sending these eggs back for your student loan? How's that yeah. going to work? And I was <laughs> like, I know I'm throwing one at your head. <laughs> How do you pay taxes on these, these, check- <laughs> these free-range right. eggs? Yeah. That's right. Um, so anyway, th- my, my thing has always been from the beginning was it's important for people. Again, it's about safety, but it's not about s- physical safety. It's about psychological safety. So when, when I was in, on the island and there was no COVID, which was true for a very long time, the mask seemed irrelevant. Right. And it was to everyone. Yeah. The last time I was there, there had been an outbreak and people were um, with contract trace- contact tracing, mm-hmm. people who were not positive were, but had been at a certain event yeah. were having to keep their business closed for 10 days. And when you're poor and you got to keep it closed for 10 days, yeah. That's that's awful. a problem. And so, in that circumstance, I'm like I'm I'm wearing a mask. Okay. Because I don't want people to be scared to come. Right. Um, and I don't in any way, as much as I think the best way out of a, out of this for all of us is to get a beautiful, quick case of Corona <laughs> and move on. Yeah. Um, it 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 was clearly not the time for that. No. <laughs> pick, pick. that's what I've learned over the last six months sorry to interrupt yeah. but that's that, that's how I would summarize is pick your battles pick your battles and pick the time timing mm. is incredibly important 
yeah. uh, to, to be what would be considered irresponsible, no matter how... Even though we think it's bullshit, yeah. they might think it's No matter how right we are hmm. to be perceived as doing something irresponsible in a place where they literally work for six weeks a year, during that six weeks to be closed for 10 days is... is uh, It's 33% of your days to earn your living. Yeah. So for me to be a part of perceived part in any way of anything negative in that right i lose my 10 years of creating a relationship with people where i am i am considered perfectly trustworthy right and so it, it's like that thing of being impeccable with your word um you know safety is important to people and tr being trustworthy mm -hmm. and if it's like if if everything they hear is coming from the media yeah. and what they've been told is wear your mask and get vaccinated yeah. and I'm doing neither of those. Yeah. And, and you're already the chiropractor. Already you're already the quack. You yeah. know, you're already <laughs> playing the, the quack role and then you're telling them like, hey, everything that you believe. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you Pick know. Pick your bottles. So, um, if somebody, at, the other thing that's been interesting about that is if somebody asked me if I'm vaccinated and almost everybody did oh, because really? they would they come in and they would go what do I need to do with my mask and I would say what do you want to do and they would go well I've been vaccinated oh, you've been vaccinated right yeah. and I was like uh, no and what was interesting about that is half of them were like yeah. you're a doctor yeah and then the other half were like, why not? Yeah. And But what was interesting is it wasn't a why not, like, no. you're an asshole. Yeah. It was, why? why? Yeah. I'm interested in why you're not. That's, like, you're somebody I want to hear why. And so then an interesting no, conversation okay. comes out. Yeah. And, um, and so, and the other thing is I am not really capable of lying. So, and, 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 because of this do, whole do, trust you, do thing. you vomit like the girl in Knives Out? <laughs> I've not seen Knives Out. You should watch Knives <laughs> when Out. She, when she has to tell a lie, she throws when, up when, when she can't lie, she vomits. <laughs> I, I watched That's it the overnight skill. and just, just when you said that, I envisioned it. Sorry That's to interrupt. a really good skill. I'm going to work on that. Um, no, I vomit the truth. Oh. So, so, I'm, so like, I've earned my place here as being a trusted member of the community. So if I say I've been vaccinated and I haven't, and somehow that comes back yeah, to bite that, me in the that's ass, a, that's, that's just not yeah. going to work. You got to well. be congruent. So I am congruent. I am mm. confident in my choice. Uh, and if somebody asks me why, I'm perfectly happy to say. And um, it was interesting. There was a conversation at a party where there were like maybe 20 people at a long table, and these are these are people that I have known for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Some more than others. Some of my very closest friends. But they're very close friends in a community that, you know, we don't have a lot in common except for this kind of fragile relationship that we build up over a long time. We, we have shared interests in that we, when we would grow our tomatoes, there was a lot of tomato talk, or when we, we would go help them harvest their grapes or help them harvest their olives. Very heartfelt, but not a lot of, like, shared... Mm -hmm intellectual interest right and we were at this table and um somebody said so there's none of those uh no vax idiots at this table right that's the moment that you go well i, I am <laughs> so it's my daughter yeah did you actually do that yeah awesome oh absolutely yeah again i'm not gonna lie good for you yeah and and then there's another guy sitting across from me who i know a little bit but what I know is that of these, of this big table, there's a couple of relatives, and then probably the, well, I mean, two of the closest friends that they have are saying, I'm not. And, um, and so then there's this whole like, Rah! and my daughter grabs me and she says, shut up. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, I have something to say. She yeah. said, yeah, I know you do. Shut up. And I said, no, I'm just going to say one thing. And it's so funny because I don't, I do not play the doctor card. I don't care. No, it's not a... No one calls me Dr. Essa. Yeah. Unless I, I have like two people that I have fired from my care and I make them call me Dr. Essa because I just want to establish that there is a... With them, they need a distance. Right. Because they were not respectful of the practice and okay. coming on time and keeping appointments and stuff like that. So two people. Yeah. That's it. I, I, I'm the same. I don't want the doctor. I don't, I don't want people to call me. It doesn't matter to me. Mm. But in but, that moment, yeah. I, I pulled out the doctor card and I said, <laughs> um, I could be wrong, yeah. but I'm pretty sure that I am the only person at this table who is a doctor. Yeah. There is probably a reason that I have chosen not to vaccinate myself or my child. Mm-hmm. That's all I said. Yeah. And it was kind of like, just the blue went, ooh. Yeah. And they were all like, oh. And uh, there's a woman who works for a doctor who was there, and she, and she said, and, sh- and so she really kindly said, there's a lot of people that don't want to get vaccinated, and a lot of them have really good reasons. And, and even and if then, they don't, it, it's their the, why do you need business. a reason? It's, right. You it's don't right. need a reason. It's their business. Um, I don't want to. Exactly. Yeah. And then the guy sitting across the table from me said, you know, I'm not, he said, I'm not anti-vax at all. Are you pro-common sense? But he said, but my daughter had a vaccine when she was a baby and she was in the hospital for six months. Yeah. And he said, I don't, I'm just, I'm not there yet. Yeah. And I said, you shouldn't be there until you're there if you're ever there. Yeah. This is not something that you should be pressured into doing. It's insane. It is insane. I, I chuckle at the thought that your uh, that your patients come in and ask you like, "Have you been vaccinated?" Because then I think about my patients and I'm like, "I don't get that question." And then I'm thinking it's because yeah, they they've seen my Instagram, mm-hmm. <laughs> they they see what, so they just don't bring it up. And I've actually had a couple of people. Uh, this would be a really interesting like study if anybody wanted to do it. I'm too lazy, but um, my maintenance care patients, uh, I'm I'm gurning and scoping. Mm-hmm. I scope them mm-hmm. and I have maintenance care patients that have been coming to me for two years and uh, I adjust maybe one or two segments on them and mm-hmm. I, I know their, their listings that they're usually mm-hmm. coming and how stressed their system mm-hmm. is and I'll be scoping and they didn't, they didn't tell me anything. And you're like, but I'll be like, like something happened here. There was one day that a girl came in and I was like, something happened since the last time I saw you last week. And she thinks she's at the witch doctor, you know, she's like, mm-hmm. yeah. And I'm like, is it something emotional? Have you had something emotional happen? And she's like, my grandfather died this week. And she's like, all right. She kind of gave me the, all right, okay, I'll yeah. listen to what you have to say. Like, I was like, yeah, yeah. And I've also had other ones where I come in and I'm like, something has really stressed you out this week or since the last time I saw you at least. And they're like, oh, I, I can't, can't think. And then they'll be like, ah. I got my uh, my shot of my the J jab. the J and J last week, and I'm like, oh, so what do you think about that? Your nervous system seems to be in crisis. A little bit stressed about that. Why do you think that is? And, oh, and then you can have a bit of a dialogue with them that way. Yeah. Now, I've learned my lesson not to go ag- aggressive at them. Not, and I was never aggressive to my patients, but family members. Mm-hmm. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm the, I'm the doctor, like mm-hmm. friends, family, and I've ha- I've said some things that in the moment I I mean well. I'm yeah. saying this yeah. because I love you and, and I care so about. So are they? Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> and now I've just learned. I'm like, all right, look, if they come to me and they're like, ah, oh, I got vaccinated, cool. Do you think that it helped you? Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Good for you. I have noticed, it's interesting, I really expected to feel more drama in people's systems that mm. had been vaccinated. And um, at one point I was like, have I lost my ability to feel? Mm. Like, because I really expected to just find this mess. And I have not found the mess that I expected. 
I, um, definitely messier in people who didn't want to be vaccinated and who felt like they had to. And then there's so many people that just feel like it's such a, a, a magic gift that their system is like, yeah. And on some level, that's definitely being perceived. Um, and there's less stress in the kidneys. There's less stress in the in the spleen. Um, and they're just, they, it's like they can breathe again. So that, I mean, okay, great. It's like the opposite of the placebo effect. I know. It's like it's, if you wanted know, the placebo. I know. It's so, and I just, I remember I was telling the story this weekend. I remember when I was first in practice and I had a pediatric intake form. And one of the first questions was, is your child vaccinated? And my, when I made the form, my thought was, you know, like, okay, then I'll ask them about follow-up questions about how messed up they are. Mm. And I just remembered, and I also remembered thinking, like, most of them will say no, right? Because it's me. Right. And the, the reality is, is most of them most say of yes. yes yeah. And then I just remember the first, like, 20, when I would be looking at them, I'd go, oh! Like, it was just so shocking and like, oh my God, I wonder what this kid is going to be like. Yep. Like, is it going to have two eyes in its yep. socket and their ears are going to be on the same side? And no, most of them are just perfectly fine. Some of them aren't, yeah. which is why we're even having this conversation. Mm. And, um, but it was, it's, it's just, it's so much of it is perspective. And um, I, I wouldn't allow myself to be vaccinated after I was five years old. So I was my own medical advocate. Right. And I basically have not gone to a doctor since, except when I had a C-section. So I was the kid at the front of the line. The, the, the nurse used to come to the school library. And I was trying to be the cocky, you know. I'm sure this comes as a massive surprise to you. Yeah, I can. But whenever I was nine, I was this. an arrogant huh. little shit. Huh. And uh, I remember, like, the nurse coming and being like, okay, like, who's going to be first for their vaccine? And this would shock you. It shocks me now, but, yeah, I was that kid at the front of the line being like, I'll go, I'll take my vaccine. And then I went in, like, it doesn't even hurt, you know, like, I was him. You're tough. Yeah. And then uh, whenever I got to about 17, this is my vaccine story, I, uh, I was working in a spa. I don't know what your equivalent of that would be. Just like a, like grocery, a, store. a yeah, grocery store garage. I was working there and I was also boxing at the time. Mm -hmm. I was boxing uh, like six days a week. I was training hard. I was the Antrim and Ulster champion. And it was during the season. Now in Northern Ireland, we have like the flu season marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. So it comes on the TV and it's like, this is the flu season. Go and take your flu vaccine. Otherwise you'll get the flu. And I'm 17. I don't know anything about health. I just want to box. Yeah. I just want to box and work two days a week in this spa to make my hundred bucks a week. And that's enough. And I remember watching it and being like, well, I'm competing and I want to go to Ireland level. So I don't want to lose two, training two days. weeks of training to the flu. So I'm going to get the vaccine. So I go to work and I'm like, hey, on my break from work, from, from my lunch break, can I go down to the doctor's surgery? And, again? and they're like, yeah, no problem. And I go down and it's the last vaccine I ever had. I went in and I, just something, when I went back to work, I remember standing at the checkout and bear in mind, this is before I've even heard about chiropractic. I don't know anything about health. And I was just standing there and it just felt like something was wrong. It felt like I had been violated somehow. And my body just, I started shivering, but it wasn't like, you know the way they, oh, it's a side effect. This mm -hmm. is a, no, this was like, there's deeper. something not right here. I'm never doing that again. And even this was long before I ever discovered chiropractic. I was like, they'll never get that back into me mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And they still haven't, the fuckers, you know. <laughs> and they say like, oh, um, when I've said that to a couple of patients, they'll be like, when are you going to get vaccinated? And I say, they can put the vaccine into my corpse because that's the only way that it'll go into me. <laughs> and I think that like solidifies my that's point to the patient. Clear. Yeah. Or another good one, if I'm having a day where I just don't want to, I don't want to, I just, I don't have the energy today. A good one, and this is nice for anyone listening, if they ask you it and you don't really want to get into an argument, you just say, I have all the vaccines I need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a good one. That's a nice one. Because they'll interpret from yeah, that whatever exactly. they want. But yeah. The, the, I'm good. Uh, yeah, I'm good. And as well, with the, the mums coming in, this is another 
thought process that I've tried to have is whether it's a vaccine or ever there was another mum that I encountered who uh, is uh, uh, heavily pregnant mm -hmm. and I just was making conversation like what what did you do today just this is a friend it's not a patient and uh, you know what did you do today and she's like oh I went to this place and that place and then uh, on my way home I had a McDonald's I had a Big Mac and fries and a Coke and this is like with a big and a and then instead of getting angry because i used to get really angry at these things whether it's someone like vaccinating a baby or whether they're having a mcdonald's when they have and then i'm like i can't get mad because they just don't know they don't have the training that i have they don't have the training that amy burke has they just they think that what they're doing is either harmless or they think that what they're doing is best mm -hmm. uh for the for the child and then you kind of have to do it with a bit with a bit more compassion and a bit more love and be like okay i disagree but i don't think you're a bad person i think you were doing the best you can like what we were saying earlier you do the best you can with what you have you know, know what you know mm -hmm. i have a question yeah i had uh albert here uh three, three weeks ago four weeks ago and uh we were talking about mm, the the reasoning behind subluxation and it came to our charles and we were explaining yeah. the similarities and differences that we have in our charles and there was a lot of stuff that we did similar and there was a lot of stuff that we did different but something that was different is i put a lot of emphasis on the stressors so like the free t's and i sit and talk to them and i'm like you know the physical stress the chemical stress the emotional stress uh, causes the subluxation and then we got into the topic of it's an adaptation mm -hmm. And I was basically trying to explain to him, and you, you're mentioned actually in the podcast, and I was like, um, I'm butchering this uh, analogy, uh, but I saw Amy Burke, it was whenever you did the seminar at Lyceum. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if we take the same thing, because we were asking each other, yeah. we were being open-minded about it, and I was like, if you ask Amy Burke, Amy Burke will say, there was stresses happening to the body, and the body knew it couldn't adapt at that moment so it decided to do it later now albert's mm, retort to that was well if the body's so smart that it can make that adaptation and subluxate itself why do i need to go to the chiropractor why if the body's so smart why would it not unsubluxate itself and the example that i came up with in the moment was okay let's say that you are a mother of two small kids and all of a sudden, your husband dies. There's a freak car accident or an illness or something, and it's like from one day to the next, gone. You don't really have time to adapt to that stress. You have two small kids, let's say one's four, one's seven. You have to organize the funeral proceedings. You have to organize the, the will. You have to get the family together. You have to organize all this stuff. And you have to be strong for the kids. So you're there, you go through the funeral proceedings and then you do the best you can with what you have. The kids start to grow up. The last kid gets to 18. He goes off to college. That person comes into my office. They have a C2 on the right. We move the C2. That person now then goes home and it's only now that that emotional stress that happened a few years ago because we don't know where the stress came from that caused the subluxation unless you got vaccinated. <laughs> But that that woman then goes home and she sits down and she that's the moment that she's like oh that was a lot and then yeah. she starts yeah. uh, crying yeah. and I've had that a, f a few times in here and y you've seen it as well where a patient will come in and you just have to say one or mm -hmm. two things after the adjustment and there's a huge uh, release but the conversation that we were having in that podcast is why if the body can decide to adapt to that later why doesn't it do it why do we need to go to the chiropractor um well it's a, it's a really good question and that the basis of that question was why the for me the definition of subluxation that i was taught which was it's a, a basically a fail, failure to adapt mm -hmm. Um, I was like, well, if the body's so smart and if innate intelligence is so smart, then why would it not adapt in the why? first place? Why? Like, is are we saying really saying that innate intelligence just loves chiropractic and 
So chiropractors need to exist, and so therefore we need to create a system that is, it, it, it's one failure is that it can't adapt to stressors. And I said, that, that makes absolutely no sense. So if, if we believe in innate intelligence and universal intelligence, which I totally do, then subluxations have a purpose. And that purpose is as important as anything else in that person's life. So there's a reason that, that we have, there's a reason that they exist. And for me, that reason is not a failure to adapt. That just sounds like a shite reason. Shite. And Very Northern Irish. Huh? Thank you. Shite. And I've been watching Dairy Girls just to get Oh, ready. I love Dairy Girls. I love Dairy Girls. Do you Girls. know Dairy Girls? Of course. <laughs> I never thought that you'd know Dairy Girls. What? It's like we watch it all the time. Wow. Yeah. I'm impressed. Okay. So, uh, shite, shite reason. reason. Okay. So, failure to adapt. Yeah. Like, in that picture, I just cannot believe that we as a profession are dedicating ourselves to the one failure of innate. Instead of looking at innate and saying innate is amazing, perfect, orchestrates everything, innate didn't screw up when it came to subluxations. They are they are there for a purpose and a reason, and from the perspective of BGI, that purpose and reason is that that information from that event is being that was unable to be integrated at the moment is being stored in the system at a, until a time where it can be integrated at a future date. Now, I believe that most people do not have the skill set required to be able to say, okay, I'm gonna sit down now and I'm gonna release all of that stored tension. But the thing is, I don't... Can you do that through other means than chiropractic? Like meditation I, yeah, or... Like, or uh, sound, like, whatever. It's like, because it's all vibration it's and tone. It's healing. Right? It's vibration and tone. So anything that, that matches that tone of that experience that's being stored in your system is going to shift it. It may not fully integrate or fully release, but it's going to change it. So whether that's walking on the beach and taking a huge deep breath and remembering who you really are, and then all of a sudden you're just like, and stuff starts to go, stuff starts to release. I mean, we, I feel like we've all had experiences where Okay, so if the sole purpose of chiropractic is to reunite man the physical and man the spiritual, it, we're not talking about releasing subluxations. We're talking about remembering who we are, remembering our connection to spirit, remembering our interconnectedness. In, in, like, this is perfect, right? All of these triangles and then this web of interconnectedness because we can see how this dot is connected to that dot even though it's not a straight line. We can see the path. We know it's interconnected and that's true for my body, but it's also true for all of us as a human species. So yes, the, the goal of the chiropractor is whether it's to restore neural integrity or to release subluxations or to increase mechanical, mechanical reception at a, at a nerve root, the, the umbrella of that, according to Didi, was to reunite man the physical with man the spiritual. Right. So, Didi also said chiropractic isn't the end of all of this. That there will be something that comes after chiropractic right. that will be better at doing this oh, really? than chiropractic. I didn't know that. Yes, you did. Mm. I'll send it to you. I That's have, something I... that I learned from Tara Dennis. And she would be great to have on your um, podcast. So anyway, I don't... I don't, I, mm, I don't really know the answer to that question mm. because I'm not sure that the body isn't smart enough at all to, at, at some times to be able to release subluxations. I feel like bodies are releasing subluxations a lot. And it's just really those kind of big gnarly ones that we and need a helping. little help. We need, we need someone else to see. Like when you're in the thick of it, it's really hard to see the way out. Mm. But sometimes it just takes to somebody to go, you know, you're struggling the wrong way. Yeah. Like just take two steps backwards. Right. And you're, it's all, and then you go, oh, wow. Okay. I didn't even see that 
opportunity or that option. Yeah. And Just put this mask on and all your problems will go away. No, not that <laughs> one. <laughs> and, um, and so it's like we, we, the, the role in the chiropractic office, I feel like, in touching people and releasing subluxations and releasing stored potential is not to mechanically fix someone, but to release the potential stored in the system. And that potential can be released by a chiropractor as it can be by taking a good run. And so if somebody's going, well, then I'm just going to go running. I'm not going to go to the chiropractor. That's everybody does whatever they're going to do. And some people resonate with going to see a chiropractor to get checked once a week, once a month, whatever. And the reality is, is that for me, I'm okay with that. Mm. Like I don't need to be the chiropractor to the world. Right. I just want to be to the people who feel like there's benefit to that. And whether right. it's because of the music in my office or the, the, the way I touch them, it, brings, it gives them warm fuzzies. Or because they feel like everything in their life is clearer and more functional. Right. I'm good with all of those. But then as well, the, there was a few weeks ago, I'm really trying to distance myself away from social media at the moment. Mm -hmm. Like I just had like a... I think it was three weeks away from Facebook and you feel so, cause it's so easy to get sucked into an argument and you're just sitting looking at the phone. You're like, is this worth my time? And so now I, I prefer to so interesting because I feel like it is not so easy to be sucked into an argument on Facebook anywhere. Yeah. So on, you might just want to think about that. Yeah, I, I am. I really am. But uh, a few weeks ago I was called uh, a, a mechanist. I was called a mechanistic chiropractor. I'm sorry. Because did that hurt your feelings? It did a little bit. It's like <laughs> you can call me any other name, but don't call me a mechanist. Um, and it was because the qu the question I was on one of these forums, and it was like, "How long does it take you to adjust?" Uh -huh. And I said, "It takes me about ten minutes to analyze, and then it takes me one minute to adjust." Mm -hmm. And they were like, "What analysis are you doing?" And I was like. Scoping, static palpation, motion palpation, the bilateral uh, mm -hmm. weight scales, uh, Gillette, modified Gillette, and then a leg length, and uh, usually maybe an amalgamation of some of those things. Like, oh, why, why do you need to do that whenever? And they were basically saying, we just, the universe just tells me where to go when I do it. And I'm like, hey, and, and it was that thing as well. It was like, uh, I want to reconnect man the physical to man the physical, the physical to man the, you know what I'm saying. It's physical. I'm not trying to balance a scope or the mm -hmm. the scales. I'm trying to reconnect man the physical to man the spiritual. And I was like, hey guys, like I'm on your on your team and I think that we can do that. Mm -hmm. But my way of doing it is I want to have some objectivity. Mm -hmm. I want to have something that makes me be like, this is a left PI because X, Y, Z. I don't just want to be like like that and just I'm going to do whatever I feel like doing today. Mm -hmm. But that didn't go down so well. Well, okay. Because they were so like... Can I mediate that? Sure. Because I think that between that and... Test after test after test. No. And feeling somebody, there's a big difference. Because if you're saying, I'm just going to, you know, pick something and check it and, and, and adjust it. Mm -hmm. Versus, I'm just going to feel what I feel and go from there, that's a big difference, right? Right. Because one of them, you're actually putting your hands on somebody and saying, I know what I'm doing right. because I have I feel trained it. these yeah. and, and I've got it. And if I want backup, I've got all that. Right. There's a big difference between that and, and assuming that somebody who doesn't do all of the scoping or the weights or the mm -hmm. the, the, the gillettes and the <laughs> um, that there's a there's a big difference between I feel and I adjust what I feel right versus I'm doing the tests and I'm doing what the tests say right and, My... but I think that I think the step that was missing and that caused the argument is that you weren't owning your skill. Right. And they were saying, dude, you're a chiropractic badass. You don't need the scales. 
But my, my, what I was trying to communicate to them is, hey, and I, I think me. that, and to you, I think that I have the hands, like, I, 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 I can feel it, I hope so, I trained a lot, but I also like to be, okay, let's do this as well, sure. just to check, and more out of my own curiosity, well, I fine. want to see if you have seven kilograms more on the left when you come in, and you leave with two, okay, we're on the right track. But, well, are you though? I mean, does it matter? I think... Because then we're... Because what if... What if that person with seven kilos versus two kilos at the end of the adjustment? What if... What if nothing changed, but you would adjust them? What if they, what if they were still on the scales? They were imbalanced, and they went out, and they were like, uh, I've been having migraines every week for my the last 10 years. I don't have any migraines anymore. Yeah, great, awesome. Right, but like, what if that same person was saying, <laughs> I, I keep getting the migraines even though my balance is off. Sure. Like, it, it just seems to me, and this is one of the reasons, and I'll, I'll be in, I don't know, maybe I won't be your Auntie Amy anymore, but <laughs> the, one of the reasons I don't like the, the subluxation stations and the scanning mm. things is that it me neither, by the way it but. puts a it puts a need on a physiological change that does not necessarily reflect the energetic change sure that we were talking about earlier and does it matter and i and really liked like your um, your talk on the um, the d the degeneration model that gave me some things to think about mm. Because for me, that's just what that's just what you do. Because every chiropractor clinic in Europe, that's what you do. And then you came along and you were like, why are we putting our energy into and reinforcing something that is quite a negative degenerative thing? And then it puts my, because I'm like, well, I'm trying to put the message across that if we do not do anything about this, it is not going to get better, it will get worse. But at the same time, why whenever you come in here do i have to be doom and gloom and be like if it's uh, fear scare care they call it yeah. scare care you better come in or you're going to end up like this you're going to die so surely there's a nicer way where it can be a bit more the pos potential positive. energy theory of subluxation yeah that's why it you're there me some... to grow and evolve and that's what's so cool because people that's what happens with people under chiropractic care whether the chiropractor wants them to or not people's lives change mm. And it's not only physical change, it's not only emotional change, it's not only spiritual change, it's not only changes in how they think, it's all of it. Mm. And to measure that by some um, postural or any check, to me feels like we're putting something that is so big in just this tiny little box and going, okay, well, you, you're too cool to feel like we can't possibly acknowledge all of your capacities but so for us we'll just take the fact that your back pain is going to get better or you will degenerate you're putting less. it into too small of a box yeah, it's, but 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 we like that as humans because it's measurable right. and it's scalable right and that's what we were talking about earlier with the back pain studies it's like it's an easy thing to measure even though I could argue with that as well, because is it the same instrument? Is it the same person? Is it the same? Like, yeah. no one can... is the same enough to be able to compare one person's back pain to another person's back pain. Yeah. You really can't. Yeah. So the fact that any change happened whatsoever is a miracle in and of itself. Like, right. really. Like, we're amazing. Um, but to then... Did those people, did they talk about changes in their menstrual cycle? Did they talk about changes in their fertility? Did they talk about changes in their sex drive? Did they talk about changes in their weight? Did they talk about changes in their emotional stability, in their mental clarity? And if, if not, why not? And if so, where is it in the study? And we're yeah. just so complex. There's so many factors. Yeah. So many factors. So for me, these things, I feel like they're cute. I feel like it's a... Um, I feel like it's something that we do to confirm what we what we know, but and it also gives the person like this is why you're paying me. 
tool yeah. because we got a change here. Right. But now if you didn't see a change there, would you still feel like you earned your money? And that's, that's a deep question. Oh, yeah. And for, for me, I think it just gives me a little indicator, but I don't want to put much weight on it. That's you see, pun, pun intended. Yeah. Um, my job is not, my objective, my job is not to clear a scope. Mm-hmm because you're more than a scope. Mm -hmm. But if I'm using leg length, a scope, the scales, and my palpation, and let's say three of those, I feel week on week. It doesn't have to happen like this, because sometimes actually I might uh, adjust your atlas and the scales get worse. So you came in with two kilograms and now you have seven. But the next time you come in, when you come in four days from now, you're completely even. Your Your body needed some time to integrate it. So I think, I'm using it as a way to just check for myself that we're on the right track. But my goal isn't to balance scales. My goal isn't to clear a scope. My goal isn't that your legs be even. It's just an indicator. It's mm-hmm. just a way for me to see that I'm doing, that we're on the right track. Well, it'll be cool in 10 years to come back and look at this and see if you're still applying all of those tools just yep. out of curiosity. That's why I like to do the podcast because I listen to things that I was saying uh, two years ago and sometimes I listen to it again and I'll be like I know that in a few years that's going to bite me in the ass because someone's going to go and and find it and they're going to be like you don't do this anymore and I'll be like nope but, I, but you said it with so much certainty and all the time I'm like yeah I have a habit of of, uh, of doing that. that that's why uh, we became friends and we became close because Whenever people were doing BGI at the school, I was like, oh, like, what the hell is this? Madness. So, so I was like, okay, let's talk to her and see. And that's the thing. You, and I'm trying to explain this to the first years in the school or people that are going through school and they become a technique a cultist mm-hmm. where they're like, this is the only way of doing it. And I'm like, look, it would be good if the mechanistic side had a lot more vitalism and it would be good if the vitalistic side had a bit more mechanism and a bit more uh, objectivity and each technique will have that interconnectedness exactly yeah but it's also true as we were saying earlier with the warriors and the gathers and the hunters and the that it, it's not a bad thing to have people be like this is what i do yeah and other people say oh i do this and it's completely opposite because the reality is, is that every single person out there is going to resonate with a different thing on that spectrum. Yeah. And so for chiropractic to be able to um, serve and appeal to the greatest number of people, maybe it's really cool to have that many different kinds of chiropractors. Yeah. Maybe and they will get people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Whenever you did the speech at Lyceum, and you were saying how it's uh, an adaptive opportunity and we need to look at it as a as a positive thing oh uh, wait I, hold on can i clarify something on mm-hmm. that because that's something that i actually had to refine mm. uh because i did get in some trouble in those <laughs> chiropractic forums um and you, you mean there's people on chiropractic forums arguing yes there were a wow couple. i'm sure it was an isolated incident i'm shocked and stunned yeah with that. Uh, and basically the concept was if you think that subluxations are a good thing don't be a chiropractor I heard about this yes be anything else work at subway change tires I don't care but don't be a chiropractor yes that upset you and yeah I was like I'm I'm teaching young chiropractors a different way of looking at our purpose and our work yeah. I want to be really clear. It's an idea. You yeah. Just, let's well, discuss something. Yeah. Sure. But at the same time, I was like, am I, am, am, have I misunderstood like the fundamental aspect of what I'm teaching? Right. So I kind of slept on it. And I came back, what, what I was like, oh, no, wait, I, I have not misunderstood. Because where the difference is, is some people may hear what I'm saying and say she thinks subluxations are good. What I'm saying is innate is good and subluxations are an opportunity 
that is created by innate. Mm -hmm. Don't, I am not saying, go out and do as many stressful things in your life and collect as many subluxations as you can because they're great. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is life is complicated and we are put in situations that create infinite numbers of discomforts and traumas and joys and all kinds of things that is so much to process that we're not able to process it all of it all of the time mm -hmm. for whatever reason it's like you know there's those moments where you're overwhelmed whether yeah. it's from it can be anything and trying to get through chiropractic college yeah or, it, or trying to get through a stoplight when yeah. you're late for work and you you're about to get fired and there's like we live in stressful times and um, and we don't have a lot of extra emotional bandwidth, and we aren't taught how to live in our body. I mean, you know this for sure, like mm -hmm. what you're saying about the McDonald's. We're not taught how to take care of ourselves at all. We're not taught how to love ourselves. We're not taught how to love each other very mm -hmm. well. We're taught it to be pretty conflictual, pretty dismissive, yeah. uh, ego-based. Not very introspective. Yeah. And so... So that concept of the subluxation is good is that subluxations exist. So therefore they have a purpose. If we believe that innate and universal are in charge of things, then there is a purpose to everything. The purpose of subluxation is to allow us to hold on to the resonance and frequency of that event that was so important that we had to live it. And therefore, if we weren't unable to integrate it at the time that it happened, then it must be important enough to hold on to. So we hold on to it. And then when we are given the opportunity, whether it is at the chiropractor, at the yoga class, at the walking down the street and tripping and that input coming into your system, freeze stored tension. Because mm -hmm. not everything that we do creates more tension. Some things relief, release, mm -hmm. release. Allow us to release tension that is stored or potential that is stored in our system. So, um, so my answer to that is that I didn't say subluxations are good. I said they, because they are there, they are purposeful. Mm. And that purpose is to allow us to grow and evolve. It's which, not that it's that the is enemy. Good. It is certainly not the enemy. The and it silent is not killer. The silent killer. Yeah. Because that's just silly. Because have you met a chiropractor that was born when Didi was who is still alive? <laughs> no. Why? stressors the limitations of matter really really not because people die yeah people die okay thank you yeah all right mm, but what was i caught in like yeah the the frustrating thing on my journey to be a chiropractor was like if i listened to that speech where you're like hey this happens it's an adaptation it's not the enemy, the, the silent killer, comes into your room like a thief in the night and steals your health. Steals your soul. Yeah. But then when you read like the, the way BJ was talking about it like that, I'm like, okay, this makes sense and this makes sense. And then another one would be like if I go to a Gonstead seminar and they're very like, you are trying to take the pressure off the nerve and it needs to be the right nerve and it needs to be the right bone and you need to set it on the disc and this and this and this. And I listen to that and I'm like, that makes, sense. that makes complete sense in my head. And then I'll go to, he'll not mind me saying because he knows I have a lot of respect for him, but Pat McMahon, he did a seminar and he was like, you put the, the force into the body, the innate intelligence works so well that it then takes that force and puts it where it needs to go. That's that's the lift. That's the philosophy of the lift. And the frustrating thing is I sit there and I'm like, that, that makes, makes sense. complete sense. But the, and the, Albert said this thing as well. He's like, you, um, who can anchor to a non-anchored mind? Mm -hmm. So he's like, whichever way it is that you, that resonates with you, you need to believe it and you need to, um, uh, it needs to be congruent for you. So the patients can't be coming in one day and you're like, we're going to do the scales and we're going to do the scope. And, we're gonna... and then the next time when they come in, you're like, I'm going to do a box on the wall and we're going to do matrix in here. And then the next time they come in, we're going to do some functional neurology. And the next time you come in, you tell them, I can't see you today because you're not in pattern. It doesn't make sense. He's like, but each one of those on their own, if you're the anchored mind, 
and you're like, this is what I believe, this is how it goes, then d- they works. will flock. Mm-hmm. So his, um, Al- Albert's mm, psyche at the moment is picking which one he wants to do and then putting out that uh, vibration. Mm-hmm. And he's like, as long as you have enough certainty in it and you believe in it, That's, they will come. Uh, that is very much like a creating a beacon practice. Mm. I think he mentioned that. Yeah. I think he said something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that, like, again, you don't need to be all things to all people. Yeah. And when I was in chiropractic college, I remember um, our dean of students, I think he was, Michael Schmidt, he came in one day, and I, I don't think he was supposed to be teaching us. It was like somebody wasn't there. And come in a little bit. He walked so. in and said, uh, I'm your teacher today, and I only have five minutes, and I'm just going to tell you the, maybe the most important thing you're going to hear this week. Don't, he said, you're gonna, you're gonna, people are going to come to you and say, my old chiropractor does this, and, and it works. And you're going to be tempted to do that yeah. and he said don't do that do what you do uh, best yeah. because you're never gonna match up to the old chiropractor yeah you're gonna do what they did poorly yeah and you're not gonna be able to do what you do well yeah don't do that I agree. and so the the beacon is being like this is i'm super clear and this is this is what we're doing that's awesome but um, I do know chiropractors who have gone to like a seminar and they come back on a Monday and they're, you know, they've got, they go from one table to eight tables in yeah. the room. Yeah, yeah. And what's extraordinary is how many people from the practice will stay with that chiropractor because here's the thing. They love the chiropractor. They don't care what it looks like. Yeah. They love the person. They love the results that they get through chiropractic. The art, the application, in so many ways is, it's not irrelevant, and meaning I'm not dismissing the importance of it, but if you're fired up about it, it's, it's good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's extraordinary what a crappy adjustment can do in somebody's life. Yeah. Imagine a really good one. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's funny how they, they get used to their, their chiropractor. Yeah. Yeah, I had one. I I I covered uh, for the the clinics that I'm working in. Yeah, I covered for one of the chiropractors, and I a guy came in, and my boss was like, "Just adjust, just do the way just you usually thing. adjust, yeah. right?" So the guy came in, and I had my scope, and I did, and I do all my tests, and I adjusted him. and then just to make a joke, I was just being lighthearted, and I was like, "All right, you know, what you get, you're a new man now." And uh, he, he got up and in Spanish, you know, he's like, no, no, I'm not a new man. He was really quite stern with me. And he was like, no. And I'm like, what's up with you? And he's like, uh, the other chiropractor always does an anterior thoracic on me. Well, he didn't say anterior thoracic, right. but he, yes, he it explained. He allowed you he, to he, understand. He puts me yes. like this and crunches me like that. And then I have the dilemma and I'm like, okay, like, do I just do this to make the guy happy or do I say no like not today and uh, I, I feel bad for for better or worse I was like all right like let's do the let's do the anterior thoracic but you'll never do an anterior thoracic the way his usual chiropractor oh, no, you does certainly it. will not no 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 nope. I had another uh, situation where there was one time I was uh, there was another intern in the school that was ill and I got the patient and I thought it was a pretty clean adjustment and the the other intern was saying to the patient when they came back like oh how, how was it with Sarek and this guy always does supine cervicals uh-huh. I adjust in the chair, chair yeah. and the patient was like he got me to sit in the chair that was really weird <laughs> but in my head it's not that weird right. and I've had times where I'm sick sure. and my yeah. patients go right. and my patients yeah. are like what are you like doing? Like taking off their oh, clothes. It's like, no, 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 we're, we're, we're not going to do that here. Stop. You're, you're not going to scoop me? No, no, we don't do that today. <laughs> they get used to whatever Absolutely. it is that you're putting out. And then Absolutely. they're like, what the hell do you mean you're going to adjust me I, in the chair? I, I'm going to tell this story. And I just 
like I feel like I need to preface it by saying in no way do I believe the the comment that was said to me was the truth. Right. So, um, but it was for that person, and it was what what was cool about it is that it just made everything work. So. When I was practicing in New York, Sue came. She used to come fr fairly frequently because her brother lived in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So she would say, I'm coming to New York. Um, why don't I come to your office for a few hours? Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah let's that do fun, that. Huh? It was great. So It's like your mentor, your hero coming. Exactly. To and so she would come and she would touch people and she would be like, come feel this. This is what's going on here. And it was amazing. And it was like, you know, I would have a four hour private tutoring, tutoring. session with her wow. on people's on people whose systems I knew pretty well. Yeah. So then we could go in yeah. pretty deep. Awesome. It was very cool. And I had at least a few people say, she's good, but you're better. And I was like, yeah, that's yeah. so sweet because you're used to me. Yeah. You have no idea what just happened to yeah. you, but we'll talk about it in a little while. Yeah. You'll let me know. Um, and it, it's true. It's like people get so used to the way you touch them, the way you smell, the way you talk, the way you, um, whatever you do. But they, but they also, it's a, it's really so much about you yeah. and your comfort with what you're doing. Yeah. Um, you can change and it will still be okay. Yeah. It happened when I, not the same thing, but kind of the same thing when I stopped personal training, because mm -hmm. I was a specialist, I only did boxing. If mm -hmm. you want, don't come to me if you want to do a bodybuilding yeah. competition. Yeah. You come to me, you're going to learn how to fight. Yeah. And it was in a private gym, private boxing club. We were only doing boxing based uh, stuff. And then whenever I left, because I got to go to chiropractic college, I was like, this guy's a good personal trainer. This guy's a good personal trainer. She's a good personal trainer. Sending it to, I, I think you would do really well with mm -hmm. XYZ personal trainer. Yeah. And uh, all of them were like, you know, some of them got mediocre results and they were like, okay, I, yeah. I'll stick around. But all of them were like, it's just not the same. They're like, no, it's not the same. It's not. But it can't still be. good. Yep. You know, and I guess it's the same with chiropractors. Uh, Rebecca was asking someone the other week, like, oh, it was Rafa. So what, uh, what technique do you do? He laughs. He's like, I do the Rafa technique. He's like, I'm the best in the world at it. And he's That's like, right. and you'll be the best in the world at exactly. the Rebecca technique. That is exactly true. And Zarek can never do the Amy Berg technique mm -hmm. as good as Amy does it. That's so right. I can come and adjust all your patients if you want, but they're all going to be like, it's not Amy. And that's one of the things that Sue said that I loved so much because it was so different from th the story just that you're saying warms my heart. Because in when I was graduating, it was like, technique was so much if you don't do it the way I'm teaching you to do it you're not doing it right and you suck mm. basically and so that was the technique seminar whatever it was it was this is how you do it yeah. do it the way I'm telling you yeah. or you're not doing it right I've been to those seminars I mean we yeah. all have right yeah. but I feel like now there's more options and Rafa is my new hero and uh, Sue we used to call it Sue Brown's work for a while yeah. and finally she said we have have to come up with a name because she, she said frankly no one is ever going to do sue brown's work except for sue brown yeah. and i can't do you and i shouldn't try yeah. and don't try to do me it's 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 not going to work and so she did in her really most sue brown way she was like we're going to vote on it and we voted and she said i have no attachment and everybody put a name in the hat and that was it who came up with bgi his name was Jeff, and I can't remember his last name, and he was an intern in our office for a while, and he hung out for a while, and then yeah. did his own thing. Yeah. Um, but name stuck. Yeah. And I, I've had that before. I've had to train myself where I've been in my head because it's happened a few times now that I'm graduated and I get some referrals. Mm -hmm. So a car part that I really respect lives quite far away, mm -hmm. and when... There's a patient around here that's close. Mm -hmm. He's like, yep, goes I send his art. Yeah. And I know when those patients come to me that I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. And there's been a couple of times where I'm like, I have to do, like, I have to live up to that. Yeah. And that's always the shittiest adjustments that you do. Yep. Well, because so it's not you. Yeah. It's like wearing somebody else's jock strap. Yeah. 
you're not going to do it as well as that person. Whereas the best adjustments will be like, okay, uh, I'm the best chiropractor in the world for you at this moment in time. That's it doesn't mean you're saying I'm the best chiropractor in the world, but you must believe that you're the best chiropractor in the world for that person in that moment. We're here right now. Exactly. And you do the best you can with what you have. And that's, that's when you get those adjustments where you're like, yo, that was, that was fire. That was on, that was money. 